Hello everybody. Uh, I'm back today with a new psalm. Um, we're going to be talking about Psalm 67 today. So grab your Bibles, open them up to page 67. Um, this is just a little itty bitty psalm, but it packs a punch. So um, hope you enjoy it. It's um, written for the director of music and there is no author named, author unknown. It's a psalm of prayer and petition. It's a, a wonderful little psalm, sometimes, you know, kind of forgotten or neglected when we think of favorite psalms. Um, Martin Luther wrote five large volumes of expositions on psalms, and he skipped Psalm 67 entirely. Nevertheless, this psalm makes a great mission prayer, and you might hear it a lot um, um, during mission time, mission festival and stuff. So let's start right off with just the first verse. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. Okay, those words might sound familiar to you. That comes from um, Numbers uh, chapter 6, verses 24 and 25. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. So that's um, the psalmist here is praying that people will experience the same grace and blessing that God placed upon Israel in the benediction he gave to Moses and Aaron. That's where we hear that. Okay, so uh, he says, bless us. So beyond the graciousness, the mercy of God, which God shows us every day by just allowing us to be, by not destroying us, the wages of sin is a death. But, um, you know, God doesn't, God has uh, taken care of that through Jesus. So now we ask God to bless us also. So it's kind of like um, you see a guilty criminal before a judge pleading for mercy. The judge gives him that mercy, and then he asks for a blessing on top of it. So that's uh, kind of hard to imagine, but yet that's what, that's what the psalmist is asking here. And God's love toward us is that great that he does that for us. And make his face shine on us. So imagine to have the face of God shining on you, smiling at you. It's the greatest gift we could ever have to know that God looks at us and he loves us and he's pleased with us, not because of who we are or what we do, but just because we're his in Jesus Christ. There's just no uh, greater peace or power in life than that. And then you see at the end of this psalm, and you see it several times, that word selah, S-E-L-A-H, that's a Hebrew word. Um, it occurs 74 times in the Old Testament, and it's just a pause. Um, it's kind of a reflective spas, a pause, a meditative pause, or it can be a, a musical interlude pause of some kind. Okay. Verse 2, that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. So this is the reason for the blessing, that your ways may be known on earth. Not just the truth of God or the word of God to be known, but your ways, the way of the Lord, the true way, the only way to be known on earth. So here um, he says, you know, not just in Jerusalem, not just in Judea, not just in the Middle East, not just in Michigan, but all the earth, that it be, be, be made known on all the earth, your salvation among all nations. So um, of all the ways of God, this is kind of the most precious and the most needful we see a dying world and we long for God's salvation among all nations. Verse 3, may the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. So it wasn't enough to just pray, may the peoples praise you. The psalmist took a, a step deeper. May all the people praise you. Do we have the same heart? Do we write off some people? Or do we instead have a, have a heart for God for all people? Because that's what he requires of us. Let's look at verses 4 and 5. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. So may the nations be glad and sing for joy. This is a joyful anticipation of the kingdom of God. Jesus is coming back, and it should make us even more excited about bringing the nations God's way, God's salvation, and God's praise. So he says, uh, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations on earth. So it's a fact. It's going to happen. Jesus Christ is going to return to earth as King of kings and Lord of lords. So we want to get the nations ready for it. Are you ready? Is your neighbor ready? May the peoples praise you. Again, the idea of Psalm 67 is so important that the psalmist repeats it again. 
this will, of course, have an ultimate fulfillment in heaven when people from every tribe and every tongue will praise God. And then in verses 6 and 7, um, it says, Then the land will yield its harvest. God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us. And all the ends of the earth will fear him. So he says, Then the land will yield its harvest. So this idea of harvest may be present in the psalm because the song was written in harvest season, maybe. The abundance of harvest lifted the thoughts of the psalmist to the greatest harvest yet to come. So, of course, we're talking now about a harvest of souls. When the earth knows God's way, God's salvation, and God's praise, then she will yield its harvest, a harvest of souls. The fruit will come forth. The appointed purpose for the earth will be fulfilled. This also tells us that the earth will never yield its harvest or find its fulfillment until she knows God's way, God's salvation, and God's praise to the ends of the earth. Then the psalmist says again, God, our God, will bless us. So look at the words there, will bless us. So it says we will be blessed. There's no question. It doesn't say maybe. It says we will be blessed. So do you see a glorious circle here? We're blessed. We use that blessing to pray for and reach out to a hurting world. And as that aligns us with the heart of God, we are blessed even more. So we use those blessings for all the earth. And it goes on and on. So, and he says again, God will bless us. It's repeated twice in a row to emphasize the confidence there, the confident expectation there. All the ends of the earth. So if the psalmist had not yet been strong enough, here he makes the point even clearer. God's heart and plan is for all the ends of the earth. And then uh, lastly, at the end, he says, all the ends of the earth will fear him. So God gets the respect, the honor, the praise, the glory that he's worthy of. We may never get that respect. We may never face anything but hardship in this life. We may end up poor, broken, persecuted. We may even lay down our life. But we're still more blessed than ever because God has used us in a great way to further his kingdom. So what makes this an Easter season psalm is the missionary theme running throughout. Um, that's the conclusion here. God's blessings are meant for all nations and for all people. Everyone needs to hear about our Lord, from those in our hometown to folks at the, you know, at the very end of the earth. As the psalm says, God has blessed us so that we can be a blessing to the world. He deserves our praise, and he deserves to be made known to all people. When God blesses us, we want to share those blessings with others. Our praise of God will lead others to praise God. God's blessings to us will be a source of blessings to others. There's that glorious circle again I was talking about. So if we joyfully tell the nations about God, the earth will yield a rich harvest of souls, one for Christ and for eternal life. So isn't that our job here on earth? To share the good news. So go out today, this week, this month, and share the good news. Um, so that was our psalm for this week, Psalm 67. And I hope that um, you'll do as the psalmist said and be a blessing to others this week. So now, um, united in our faith and our love for each other, let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alrighty, enjoy your week, and I'll be back next week with another song. Bye.